Hyper log log. You may have heard of this. It's a way to count cardinality within a data set. A cardinality is just the unique number of IDs, sort of like a set, the number of unique elements in a list. And that's what this algorithm is for. That's literally all it is. It's just a counting algorithm. Here's where it shines, though, at billions and billions of unique numbers. Hyper log log is efficient from a computational perspective. Also, it's memory efficient because it can count billions and billions of entries. Here's the problem. If you try to do this yourself without a hyperlog log style statistical probabilistic algorithm, you will run out of memory really quickly. You can run into gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes of memory required in order to maintain a list of items that are in the large number ranges. So here's, for example, you don't want to use hyperlog log if you're counting like a small number of things, anything below a million, right? Maybe, maybe 10 million. You can easily and modern hardware have no problem counting and maintaining a list of a million or 10 million items and a simple hash map. You can just maintain that list easily. Now, if you want to count unique numbers more, uh, more efficiently, you will need something like hyperlog log, which th does that for us. And we need, so essentially hyperlog log is a probabilistic algorithm used to estimate cardinality. Keyword is estimate because it's statistical, probabilistic, and it's not gonna get a 100% perfection. It will get really close though, like 99.9%, .9%, which is good enough. That's plenty enough, especially when you have very large numbers, the, the amount of error, it doesn't matter that much because the numbers are so big, we don't really care about the rounding of those numbers. So you might as well use hyperlog log. Don't use it though, if you have a small set, there's no reason to. Though if you're counting big, big, big numbers and you wanna count the distinct number of elements, that's what hyperlog log is used for. So how does the hyperlog log algorithm work when we're counting the unique numbers in a set? How do we know what the actual number of elements are using the hyperlog log algorithm? It's actually pretty simple. What, it's just an array. It really is, it's really right. They use a lot of terms like bucket and leading zeros and uh, mean calculation over the set. Guess, guess what? It's actually just an array. It's a really simple, an array. And based on the number of bits that you want to use within a hash, you will allocate that number of buckets. And the term buckets is just the length of the array. You can more than easily create your own hyperlog log algorithm just by starting with this beginning part of it, just creating. So look, look, let's look at this diagram right here. You see here at the bottom of this, uh, of this diagram, we see a, 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 an essentially a, an array. That's all this is, an array. So you've got, you know, position zero, one, two, three, and so on up to 16. We've got 16 elements here. And this is just the length of the array. Inside of each of these arrays is just the value of an, an integer. It's all it is, it's just an integer. So you've got an array of integers. That is your hyperlog log data store. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that amazing? It was, it, you wouldn't expect that. You would think hyperlog log, wow, that sounds like it's an advanced algorithm that does some fancy things. Well, this is actually just the data store aspect of the hyperlog log algorithm. To, in order to populate the data in those buckets, those um, array elements, you do a couple things. First, you have to pick um, what, so actually let's, let's start, let's start from here. We, we are counting, hyperlog log is meant to count unique elements, the unique elements in terms. So say if you have the word apple and the word orange, but the word orange appears 50 times, the word apple appears once, you only have two unique elements there, apple and orange. So that's what hyperlog is going to count for us because apple, you, you hash the, the uh, the string the array the the element itself into you know a binary string which all hashes do they they hash a string into a binary string and so you get a whole bunch of ones and zeros perfect excellent and that's what we need now that we have this ones and zero strings we take the based on the number of buckets that we want the more buckets you have the more accurate you get in terms of the total values that you are uh, you're counting so if you have a small number of buckets, your accuracy is reduced over large numbers and small numbers. But if you have a large number of buckets, you're gonna consume more memory because you need more 64-bit integers in there. You will uh, be able to increase the accuracy range. That's easy. So let's just sit, start at four. Say we have four bits. You take of that binary string, we take the first four bits from the Apple hash and we say that's 
the element that corresponds to the bucket or the position in the, the array of integers. And then we count the number of zeros. And you can, you can do this in a bunch of different ways. You just wanna count consecutive zeros. You can either do it from the leading here, from this point forward, dot, 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 which in case would be one zero. Or you can do it at the tail, and you can count the number of zeros that you have at the end. That works too. It doesn't really matter. You can do it from any of the, any of the directions because these number are, it doesn't matter. You can implement it however you want from that perspective, beginning or the end. You just count the number of zeros, or you can count the number of ones if you want. You can you can go either direction. There's no set reason to do it. You're just needing to count uh, a probability of you know its position. So you, then what you do is every time you add another string into this hyperloglog -log structure, you hash that element, the word apple, into strings of a uh, binary string. You determine what bucket it goes in, and then you count the number of zeros at the end. And then if that if that element, the number of zeros is bigger than the current value in the bucket, then you'll update the bucket. If it's smaller, then you just keep that value the way it was before. And so now what you're doing is creating a, a, a count of, of heuristics across all of your buckets based on the unique set. So you'll notice that we added just one element here, the word apple, and we have uh, bucket five. Uh, the bucket number 11 is actually the value five. All these other buckets are gonna be one. So then we would sum the value and essentially get the mean, the average, and then that would give us the sort of ideal, the probabilistic number of elements in this set. That's it. And we're really just dealing with this array. It's really simple. This whole time you would think, oh, that sounds really complicated. No, it's just an array of integers. <laughs> really, it's really simple. Let's just do a quick walkthrough of the hyperlog log number, the steps that you need to take in order to have your own hyperlog log structure you can write from scratch actually it's pretty easy because we know that the hyperlog log structure the data structure itself is just an array it's a one-dimensional array of the number uh it's all numbers right so a one-dimensional array of integers that's it that's all it is that's the whole data structure you thought it was more complex than that i did i thought it was way more complex than that that's often what I'm finding out about a lot in the computer science. They use these fancy words all the time of just their math oriented words and they're like the word cardinality. That, that sounds like a pretty cool word. What does it mean? It sounds complex and it, no, it's just unique number of elements. That's all it is. And so really all I want to do is count the number of unique things in a list. That's what hyperlog logs for. Let's just walk through here the, the steps. All right, so hashing of the elements. This is, we are gonna take a word and convert it into ones and zeros using a hash algorithm, which has a consistent output. Takes the word and turns it into a string of ones and zeros. Easy peasy, that's step one. And then we divide into buckets. We say the first four digits, this will be the, the number of buckets or the position, the number of, uh, what do you call it? The, the the length of the array, how many elements in the array. So four bits would actually allow us to have, you know, uh, 16 elements in the array. So that gives us 16 possibilities where this number would land in the buckets up here. So we've got the number of buckets here. So up 16 buckets, and we would land in one of these buckets based on the value of the first four bits in the binary string. Then we, div uh, the first few bits of the hash value, let's say the four bits, determine which bucket the value goes into. If we're using four, bit, uh, four bits, that means we get two to the four, which equals 16 buckets. Really simple. So you can also increase this number to five bits if you wanted, or six bits, or 10 bits. The more buckets you have, the higher accuracy you get overall at the cost of memory consumption. But it's fine, you can actually have a lot of buckets because this is just an array of integers. So you have plenty of room to grow if you needed. Counting leading zeros, this will determine what values go into those integers. For each hashed value, count how many zeros appear consecutively after the first four bits. So you can do this in any order you want. You can do it after the first four bits or at the tail of the, of the uh, binary string. So you can count the last four bits. And as soon as you hit a one, you stop the count. Really simple, kind of like this. So one, two, three, four, five. We, get, we hit a one, done. So there's five. So this goes into the 11th bucket. 
because uh, 1, 0, 1, 1 actually ends up being 11, and so that's where that value goes. The next time we add another element, we go through the same process. If it ends up in the same bucket, we count the zeros again, and then if the number is larger, we just overwrite that number. If it's not larger, then it just stays the same. And then, to, and then when we want to say how many elements are in there, we just estimate the number of unique elements by using the max counts from each of the buckets, uh, and then we ba basically average them. That's it. That's really it. It's a really simple algorithm. It does get a little more complex when we look at smaller numbers and a, a better estimation algorithm to provide more accurate, but not a whole lot. You're really looking at the core of the algorithm here. This is the important part. Let's walk through a quick example on how a hyperlog log works when we're dealing with a unique set of items. Now, hyperlog log, of course, is really only good for a large number of elements that we want to count as unique values. You wouldn't want to use this for a small set. In the example we're walking through has a small set, and so this will be an uh, unnecessary <laughs> level of use for hyperlog log. You want to use it for a large number of unique values. So for example, uh, let's actually just walk through. So we've got three elements here. We've got apple, banana, and cherry. Fruit, I love fruit. Fruit's fantastic. I like to eat the fruit. We hash the value using any sort of hashing algorithm that will turn our string, which would be apple, into binary string. Uh, this is what that looks like. And then we count the first four elements here uh, in the binary string as what bucket that goes into. And then you can see here a mapping of that bucket. Now, of course, our buckets is just an array. It's an array of integers, and that's what we're looking at. And then you, your values of your, what's called the register. In this case, there's really only one array here. You're just kind of looking at the map, for example, the mapping here. So this is element zero, and this is element 16 at the end. And this is the same. This is the real array here. So this is the only data that I've highlighted on the screen that's actually being represented in memory on a computer within the algorithm for hyperlog log. That's it. This is what it looks like. It's an array of integers. Then as we add elements, we update this array and we find the number of leading or trailing zeros, however you want to do it. Just you have to be consistent. It doesn't really matter. You can even do leading or trailing ones if you want it. It's the same thing. It doesn't really matter. It's just you have to be consistent. So we count the number of leading zeros after the first four elements, and that is the count. And so that will update element, uh, uh, what's here, 16, 15, 14. So we've got 14 here, position 14, and we update that from the bucket, and then the, the count here, the, leading, the count of zeros, and that number goes here. And so if we saw more zeros in here, say we saw more zeros like that, now we've got even more zeros. So that would look like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven trailing zeros. So that would actually look like this. And then we update the value there. Then now every time we add a new element, we follow the same procedure and we only update the row or the, you know, the column of the array if we need to. And you only ever update it if it's bigger than the current number. That's pretty straightforward. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, so then you sum all these values together with an average and it gives you an essential unique cardinality count that's statistically accurate up to a certain percentage based on your bit depth. So if you have a larger hash value and a larger bucket size, you'll be able to increase your overall accuracy.